welcome back to Season Liberally. Today we are going to be making a wonderful roasted tomato soup. It's absolutely wonderful in the winter. And we're going to be leveling up our grilled cheese. So you're going to want to stick around. So the soup we're making today is a roasted tomato soup. Super easy to make, takes about an hour-ish, so you can have it on a weeknight. It's 100% vegan, uh, and so it's a wonderful soup. It's got a really nice, rich flavor to it, and the reason why it does is because it's roasted in the oven, so you're gonna roast your tomatoes. We are actually gonna use a bunch of different kinds of tomatoes today. We're gonna be using these cherry tomatoes as well as these heirlooms and a couple other uh, like tomatoes that I had lying around. Now, first thing I wanna do is I wanna cut two onions. So the onions, I wanna cut them. I, I, I don't really need to dice them. Actually, I wanna to try to keep them in wedges. This is gonna roast in the oven for 20 to 30 minutes, as much as 45 minutes, depending. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that the onions themselves are not in too small a pieces so that they burn. We wanna make sure that they get a little bit of brown on them, but we don't wanna get them so that they're burning. So first I'm gonna have the onions, then I'm gonna nip both ends off, peel them, and then I'm just gonna cut them in half, quarter them. Do that with two onions. Now, as I take these heirloom tomatoes, I'm gonna to first tear the stem off of these now you could, if you want, you could get your paring knife out and you could, uh, you could certainly core these. But I, I'm actually, since I'm going to be using the whole tomato, I'm just going to cut it in half. Then I'm going to just use my knife to quickly take the, the top stem portion out. Once that's done, I'm going to cut it into a size that's about the size of the onions, the onion wedges that I had created earlier. I'm just going to cut the, the tomato into that size. Do that with two tomatoes. Now, I had a little bit of extra tomatoes left over. These are uh, tiny little grape tomatoes. These will roast up just fine in there. Now I'm gonna use two pints of these cherry tomatoes. What I like to do is I like to lay them out on my cutting board first. I don't like to just throw them in the bowl because one may be bad. I did find a bad one in here. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you look them over a little bit, touch them. Uh, you know, if they're a little soft, that's okay. This is not, the, the, the soup isn't gonna depend on a firm tomato. Now, I am not taking the tops off of these. At the end of this, I'm actually gonna run it through a strainer. So I will, if there's any kind of matter at all, it'll get stuck in that strainer. So I'm not too worried about roasting these with the, with the tops on. You could, if you wanted to, take the time to cut all the tops off of this, but I, I don't see the point. So now to this, I have my tomatoes and my, my onions in here. I wanna add a couple of different things. First, I'm gonna add a little bit of tomato paste to this. Now as this roasts, the tomato paste will roast as well and it's gonna coat this, all the tomatoes and the onions that are in here. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put in, I'm gonna say, we're gonna do maybe three, four tablespoons worth of, worth of tomato paste. Now to that, I'm gonna add some salt. And now I'm not salting this to taste yet, but the salt is gonna help break down the cell walls here. So I wanna make sure I salt it a little bit. As this cooks and as this heats up, the salt's gonna help break the, the cell walls down and it's gonna release that moisture. And when we release the moisture, then the sugars can caramelize and that's what gives this the flavor. We're gonna add a little bit of pepper to this too as we toss it here. And then I'm gonna add some olive oil to it. Now, this is gonna be, you're basically gonna to wanna to look at this and just guess. I, I would guess you're probably gonna add about a, between a quarter cup and a third of a cup of olive oil to this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, I'm gonna give it a stir. I'm gonna just give it a nice toss. You use your hands if you want. It's your kitchen. So I'm stirring this up, and what, what's happening is, is there's creating a sort of slurry with the tomato paste and the olive oil. Now some of the, some of the onions are, are sort of falling apart a little bit, little pieces and little, little, uh, little layers of onion are falling out, that's fine. And so now you can see here, there's, there's a little bit of sheen on here, and you can also see that there's, that there's that tomato paste along with the olive oil that I put in there. Now, 
there's gonna be garlic in this, but I don't wanna add the garlic right now. Because if I, if I add the garlic now, what's gonna happen is, is, is the garlic's gonna cook too much. It's gonna get too brown. So I'm actually gonna wait to add the garlic to this roasted pan until about 15 minutes or so before it's done. I got the oven right now. It's set at 400 degrees convection. That's a 425 still oven. And what we're gonna do is we're basically just gonna take and we're gonna split this into two somewhat even layers and throw it into the oven. Now, what, what you don't wanna do is you don't wanna crowd your pan. You wanna spread this out, right? So we're gonna spread this out so it's nice all across the pan. And we're gonna do the same thing on this one so that it's not, it's not all up on top of each other. The closer it is, the more it's gonna steam and we want it to roast. So I'm gonna put this in there. Watch this close, right? I'm gonna check this at 15 minutes. And then I'm gonna check it again at 20 minutes. And I might even move it around, spin it around because there's hot parts of your oven, so you wanna spin it around a little. You know, when, I, when it starts looking like it's really starting to lose a lot of moisture, I'm gonna add my garlic to that. But I'll pull it out and show it to you before then. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw it in there and we're gonna start roasting it. Make sure to check it very often. Start at 10 minutes and then do it every five minutes. So you can see it's not completely charred yet. You're gonna get a little char here. This is the perfect time for us to add our garlic. I did not crush this garlic. What I did was just, I just so, sort of softly mashed it so that I could actually pull the paper off of it. I do, what I don't wanna do is, is get it so it's, it's disintegrating. I wanna try to keep it in its, in its entirety. I'm gonna put a little oil over the top of it just so I know for sure that it's coated in oil. Give it a little shake and I'm gonna put it back in. This will be been for about another 10 minutes. All right, it's been in the oven now after I added the garlic for about 10 minutes or so. So we're gonna take it out and we're gonna put it in a pot. Okay, so now what we've done is we've removed a lot of moisture from these tomatoes and they've got this really nice little bit of char on them. This onion does and then they all, all the skins have sort of broken. The tomatoes themselves have really turned into mush, which is exactly what we want. So we're gonna take all this and put it in our pot. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna cook this a little bit. We wanna get, wanna get some liquid in here. We are gonna add water though. Now you can add chicken stock if you wanted to. That's certainly up to you. Uh, I don't feel like this, this needs chicken stock, but you can absolutely add it. I'm gonna add water though, and water is gonna be a perfectly, uh, perfectly reasonable additive to this and it'll really make sure that the tomatoes are the main event here. I'm gonna add a little more tomato puree to this too as we near the end. Um, to thicken it up if I need to. So that's, so what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna just add water. Uh, you know, I'm gonna add about four cups of water to this and then see what it looks like and then bring it up to a boil. I wanna add some herbs to it too. All right, so I'm gonna, just gonna add a little bit of water to this. That's about four cups of water and that's gonna be, I think, kinda perfect. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this up to a nice boil. What I wanna do is I wanna cut some fresh herbs. Before we take this off, before we finish this, we're gonna finish it with a little bit of fresh parsley and a little bit of basil. Uh, we wanna make sure that we add that uh, right at the end. We don't want it to cook too long with it in there. Uh, so we're just gonna, what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna mince this up real fine. I'm gonna put in about maybe two tablespoons worth of parsley into this. And I want it to be fine, just to make sure that there's no big chunks. What I don't want is someone to grab a spoonful of soup and wind up with a big chunk of parsley that's covering their tooth or something. Now as this comes up, I'm gonna add a little Aleppo pepper. You could use crushed red pepper if you want. I just want a little tiny bit of heat in this. I don't want it to be uh, completely bland. I want to make sure that there's a little bit of heat in there. It's gonna, and that's actually gonna complement the grilled cheese I make later. So I added about half a teaspoon. You can add whatever you like uh, when it comes to the, the Aleppo pepper or chili flakes, whatever, whatever you like. You can also, if you want, you could take uh, jalapenos or serranos, and and when you 
when you make this, you could actually cut those, toss them in with the tomatoes, and you can roast those as well. A regular green pepper would work too, roasted, roasted red pepper. You can roast a bunch of different kinds of vegetables and put them in there. I'm just, in particular, using tomatoes today, but a little pepper in there would be wonderful. All right, that's boiling pretty well. I'm gonna add my parsley in there, and I'm also gonna add a little bit of this basil paste. Uh, I couldn't find fresh basil at the store. It is, of course, winter, and you know, there's a supply shortage, so I got basil paste. Uh, fresh cut basil, chiffonade basil, perfect to add into this right now. If you're adding basil paste, about a half a teaspoon is fine. Let me give this a stir. That basil, that parsley, that's just, just a wonderful smell, that fresh herb smell added to that tomato, which had a real rich, rich smell to it before. And we're just gonna let this cook just for a minute or two. It's gonna cook the, the herbs a little bit into there, let it, let it steep just a little bit in there, and then we're, we're gonna blend it, taste it, and it'll be done. All right, it's been going for a couple minutes. I'm gonna power this off now, because what I wanna do is I wanna actually blend it, and so it doesn't need to be hot, and this has plastic, and I don't wanna melt that, so. Be careful when you're doing this. One of the major problems you could do is you could turn it sideways and splash yourself. So just try to keep it flat at all times. You have to lift it up, lift it up and put it on what you want to cut. All right, now you got two options. You can leave it like it is. I'll show you what it looks like. You see there's, there's a thickness to it, and that thickness has a little bit of matter in it. I don't know if you could see that. There's still a little bit of matter in there, right? That's a rustic soup. So if we want to keep it that way, we can. Perfectly fine to keep it rustic. Little chunks in there. Fiber's good for you. I'm actually gonna taste it, see if it needs salt. 100% need salt, like so much salt. You may find that your tomatoes are really acidic. You're getting a back of the throat sort of feel. I do not feel that. These roasted, the, the sugar is sort of caramelized, so I don't feel that. But if you feel like it's a little too acidic, add a little sugar to it. You know, start like small, half a teaspoon or so, stir it in, taste it, half a teaspoon again, taste it again. You, don't, you certainly don't want to wind up with ketchup, but it will take the edge off that acid that's in the back of your throat. So if, you, if it's a little sour, go that way. If it feels too sweet, I don't think it will, but if you caramelize your, your, uh, everything a little too long or something and it feels a little too sweet, you could always add a little splash of vinegar to this to make the acidity level come up. We use a nice bold vinegar if I was gonna do that, maybe a balsamic would even add a nice color to this. Now, I'm gonna finish this soup a little differently. So now I would normally just serve it like it is. This is a perfectly fine soup. Like I say, it's a rustic soup. I'm actually gonna run it through a sieve so we can see what it looks like when it's nice and smooth. Now my sieve is pretty fine, okay? So you're gonna wanna have a fine sieve, but you could even run it through like something like a colander too. That'll catch some of that matter. But really you wanna have a nice fine sieve Cheesecloth feels like a lot of work. It feels like, and it also feels like, you know, a little more than you'd want to do on a weeknight if you're trying to make soup, but you could certainly run it through cheesecloth if you were motivated to do so. Now you don't want to fill it up too much because what I want to do is I want to press it around a little. I want to move it around just a little bit so that I can strain all the liquid out of this vegetable matter that's in here. Now I'm pressing up against the side here, just trying to get all that liquid out of there as much as I can. And as you can see, that's a big chunk of just straight up vegetable matter. You can just throw this directly away. We're gonna add more soup and do it again. You're gonna cut down on the size of your soup though, I will say that, you're gonna lose a lot of soup here. A lot of the mass of the soup's gonna go away. For some people this is way too tedious a process. They would never do this. No reason to do it for them. Uh, I would, if I was having a dinner party, I would absolutely do something like this. If it was just me and my wife just sitting down to have dinner, I probably wouldn't. Now once this is, this is strained completely, you could finish this with a little cream, cream of tomato, 
If you want, one tool that can make this even easier for you is if you had a food mill. Food mill would do this all in one step. You would pour this into a food mill and then you would just crank it and then the food mill would just press out everything and it would keep all this vegetable matter, it would essentially strain it and then it would, it, would take, uh, it would also crush all those tomatoes and stuff, so it would be perfect. You wouldn't even have to use a blender if you had a food mill. I don't have a food mill. Perfect, a perfect tomato soup. Um, if I wanted to add a little more body to it, I could certainly add a little bit of this to it, because when you take this apart, you, uh, you wind up with a, a, a liquidy soup, and so if you wanted to have a little more body in it, and this does not have the vegetable matter like this does. This is very fine. And so it would add that body that you would, you would want you know, to, to measure and to see exactly how much body you would need. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it exactly as it is. I think it's a perfect soup. We're gonna leave it alone. Now we're gonna get started on the grilled cheese. So I baked up this loaf of bread earlier today. Uh, I'm gonna actually use this bread. You can use whatever bread you like. Uh, I, you're gonna want a hearty bread for this. This is a, the better, you know, the, the longer it cooks, the you know, the longer the ferment, the better the bread. This is my overnight bread. You can find the recipe here on Season Liberty channel. Um, I love this bread. It's really easy to make and it's really hearty. You can go find this bread, a very similar type of bread at, at your store, or you could use if you want, uh, certainly use a loaf bread. You know, even even straight up wonder bread will work. All right, so I'm gonna cut a nice piece off here, right out of the center of the loaf. And this is gonna serve as my piece of bread. So, I'm gonna cut this bread in half, so I have a nice, sandwich looking thing ready to go here. First thing we're gonna do is we are gonna butter the outsides. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Now you can, if you want, melt some butter and just brush this on it. I feel like you don't get as much butter and you really wanna have a nice crisp uh, surface to work on when we level this up in a minute. So I'm using about a I mean, heck, it's probably close to a tablespoon of butter per side. A lot of this butter is going to melt off, but this butter is essential. Now, we're going to set this on the side here because we're actually going to construct in the pan. Going to want a nonstick pan for this. Um, a good nonstick pan, too. You can, of course, use a, a non-nonstick pan. You're just going to stick a lot of stuff to it. This, what we're gonna do when we, when we uh, cook this is we're gonna actually put cheese directly into the pan. And if you don't have a good nonstick pan, you're gonna wind up with it sticking. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, that's what we're gonna use. We're gonna use one of these. Uh, I have a T-Fall, I love this pan. Um, I get a new one maybe every two years, they start to wear out, but these are awesome and uh, they're like 30 bucks, 30 or $40. And this one actually works on induction. So I'm gonna go with a medium high heat to start. I'm gonna probably turn that heat down depending on how much how hot I think the pan is getting. I don't wanna burn anything and I certainly don't wanna cook something so it's so hot that it's gonna burn or, or, or make it like it burn the outside. Uh, I want it nice and caramelized, golden brown. I have from the deli counter, I got just straight American cheese that I'm gonna be using for this. One of my favorite cheeses uh, to use is Munster cheese. Munster cheese is a beautiful cheese, melts beautifully and it's really stretchy, right? So you cut it, you can pull it and it just stretches and it's just got a really great mouthfeel. Munster is one of my favorites. Uh, Gouda is really good in a, in a grilled cheese. I'm just making a straight up American cheese. Uh, grilled cheese, but you can use whatever kind of cheese you want, uh, you know, any kind of soft cheese. I want to stay away from the really hard stuff because it's not going to melt. All right, this is getting hot, so I'm going to start constructing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put butter side down into the pan, and I'm going to lay my cheese on top. Make a decision on how many, how many pieces of cheese you want in here. I'm going to use three for mine. You can use however many you want. Just remember that the longer, the more cheese you got, the longer it's got to cook. All right, this is cooking away. Now you see a lot of that butter just sort of comes right off. It just, it's right off in the pan. That's okay. 
We just want to make sure that all, all those nooks and crannies in the bread, get that butter in there. Grilled cheese is not health food. So we're going to make a, a really nice, wonderful tasting grilled cheese. So I, I lift it up a little just to look and see. I, you can normally tell by smelling, right? So you can smell exactly when the bread starts to really caramelize, but, um, but you want to check once in a while. Just lift it up and take a look. All right. Now we're going to turn it over. See our nice golden brown there. As I turn it over, butter melts, seeps into all those pores. So I'm gonna turn the heat down a little bit on this because I, I do feel like it's probably cooking pretty quick. It is. And I want it to cook a little slower because I want it to caramelize very nicely and I want the inside to be done too. I don't want it to, you don't want it to cook so fast that the inside's still raw. You want the cheese to melt. And it's not gonna do that if it's super hot because it'll just get too, it'll get hot too quick and it'll just cook the very outside. You want it to give it a chance to let all that heat work its way through. All right, we got another beautiful side here. So here's what you're gonna do. I shredded some of this, uh, some of this Colby up, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a little bit of this Colby, I'm gonna throw it in my pan like so, and then I'm just gonna take this sandwich and I'm gonna lay it right on top of that Colby. And that is gonna crisp up and it's gonna be delicious. All right, one side's done. Add a little more cheese on the other side. Pick it up, flip it directly on there. What? Tell me that doesn't look amazing. Tell me that doesn't look amazing. Straight up amazing. And it's gonna be delicious. Now all that extra butter in the pan, mixing with that cheese down there to really cook it. This is leveling up your grilled cheese. Trust me on this. The inside is completely cooked. The outside is nice and crusty with some cheese on the outside that has caramelized. Let's turn it over. Oh, look, ha, look at how beautiful that is. It's gorgeous. All right, we'll give it a try. Now I tried the soup earlier. Delicious, wonderful soup. That Aleppo pepper is perfect in there. A little tiny bit of heat in there. It's got a great, great flavor to it. Nicely balanced. I didn't, like I said, I didn't have to add any sugar to it. All right, let's try this grilled cheese. Oh, look at how beautiful that is. Oh, it's so gorgeous. And you see this cheese is melted in the center and the outside is nice and crispy. I'm gonna try the cheese. I'm gonna try the grilled cheese without dipping it, but I'm gonna dip it too, so. Seriously, an amazing grilled cheese. Probably, this could be one of the better grilled cheeses. You can add stuff to this too, so if you wanted to add bacon or something to it, a little bit of ham, you could add some vegetables in there, roasted vegetables, be delicious. But straight up, just this is just American cheese, a little bit of Colby on the outside, perfect. Now, I'm gonna dip it, it was my soup, and I get to do that. Absolutely perfect pairing together. That tiny bit of heat in there is perfect. That acidity and then the, the amazing richness of this, along with the, you know, just the textures here. You got on the outside, you got this crispy. The cheese, of course, is nice and gooey. And then the bread is soft and hearty. It is absolutely perfect. I hope you try this recipe out. I hope you subscribe to the channel. So make sure to go down there and hit that little bell and then you'll know when I post stuff. Uh, but please subscribe, share this with your friends. Thanks for coming and please join me next time on Season Liberally. Mm -hmm.